This week on The Startup Life. We're not necessarily focusing on the coin itself, but how can we, let's say, educate people on the coin or mm -hmm. the best uses of the coin. Right. I can show these businesses how to use the coin. All right, Startup Nation. So let's take flight with Terrence Santep and Rye Wilson as we bring him back to talk about Bitcoin. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is The Startup Life. Let's begin. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hey, Startup Nation. Do you enjoy the startup life? Now you can let the world know with gear from the show. Choose from the label yourself, make your own look, and making money t-shirts to tell your story of your path of entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to purchase. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're ready to receive some value today. We got a re returning champion back in the booth today. My man, Mr. Terrence and Teppin Rod Wilson. Did I say it right this time? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Nailed it. All right. <laughs> We got my man Terrence in the building, and he's gonna he's gonna talk to us about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and this and that nature, with you know news reports and how everything in the media portrays Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and people having questions. Startup Nation. I thought it was important to kind of bring an expert, if you will, to the show. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Well, first of all, Terrence, you ready to pour some knowledge in the Startup Nation today? Yes, I am. All yes, right. I am. Thanks for having me again. Man. <laughs> awesome, Honor. awesome stuff. All right, man. So. First things first, man. What is Bitcoin? What is cryptocurrency? Just tell us what sure. is, what's going on. Sure. Bitcoin is a digital currency mm -hmm. that's encrypted and it's independent of a government or a central bank. Gotcha. So Bitcoin can be termed or is the evolution of money. Gotcha. You know, there was Kyrie shells. Right. Bartering, mm -hmm. gold, the dollar bills. For sure. Uh, electronic you know debit cards for sure the next step is bitcoin okay cryptocurrency so is the evolution of bitcoin gotcha gotcha okay cool cool because and i'm glad you you know i wanted to start the show off like that i'm glad you explained that because like i said man we have a lot of people like on that you know that well, like month month and a half two months stretch where it was like skyrocketing up and everybody's like oh man we gotta get into bitcoin we gotta get into bitcoin is that and the other so thank you for uh opening the show up you know with that for us now let me explain this man because you know i know you get a lot of back and forth with you know some of the stuff we're going to talk about today but kind of talk about where the value for bitcoin sure. comes from a little bit well the value of bitcoin just like with any other currency mm -hmm. it's based on the perception of those who will use it for sure and accept it for sure the dollar bill that we currently use mm -hmm. uh, and the dollar or the currencies of most uh, free nations are what's called fiat currencies okay they're actually not bank uh, backed by anything okay but the trust of the people understood. of that nation understood understood okay so like what are some of the reasons we should be excited about currencies like bitcoin and ethereum and litecoin and are there any reasons for concerns as well sure sure mm -hmm. sure the reasons that we should be excited is that bitcoin was created to to take the power, should I say, out of the hands of corrupt governments and bankers mm -hmm. and put that power into the hands of people. Gotcha. The masses. Right. Uh, out of the 7 billion people on the planet, only 1 billion have access to banking. Gotcha. What Bitcoin, or Bitcoin does, mm -hmm. it gives access or allows those 6 billion people around the world to have basic access to what we call consider banking services for sure uh, for sure with ethereum ethereum is a platform more so to where is other currencies can be developed or and also where uh, smart contracts can take place and basically all that is is the facilitation of uh, the digital facilitation of contracts mm -hmm. and execution of that contract where gotcha. it can be set up at one point and once you fulfill specific obligations and duties the contract fulfills itself and you know automatically takes gotcha. place. Gotcha. Litecoin, the purpose of or the objective of Litecoin 
is that the transactions will be faster than Bitcoin. Okay. That's the purpose of Litecoin. Gotcha. Okay. The concern is that there are many people uh, get rich quick thinking that, hey, I see Bitcoin is this much. I remember it was this much. If I get in right now, I'll make all this money. Or people putting out coins and saying, we're the next Bitcoin. Right. And they they're basic they're basically putting out something that's useless. Gotcha. And then there's the difference between those a centralized and decentralized currency. For sure. Uh, Bitcoin is decentralized. Then you have Ripple, is centralized. Of course, you hear uh, people see Ripple in the news and they're like, oh man, I want to get some Ripple. And Ripple may right. one day be as much as Bitcoin. Well, it's, that will be impossible because there's so much that that's in the market. There's not enough money for let's say if there's 50 billion ripple out mm-hmm. for 50 billion ripple to be worth 11,000 per coin there's right. not currently enough money right so <laughs> i got you okay okay i appreciate that now what is bitcoin cash cuz like you know we, we we got bitcoin but what's bitcoin cash and what is there a conversion there like you know can i drop that knowledge on us for us if you would so the miners those who mine bitcoin Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like a protest, so to speak. Gotcha. Where they came together and they said they want to change protocol of how Bitcoin operates. Mm-hmm. And we want to, the technicals, of, we want to change like the block sizes that we're going to uh, use in mining. Sure. And by doing this, we can, uh, the transactions can be more efficient, efficient and effective. Mm-hmm. And it's more in line with the creator of Bitcoin's mission or I did Satoshi Nakamoto. Gotcha. And um, so it's called a fork or a hard fork, fork. Okay. And so what happens is anyone who owns Bitcoin whenever there's a fork, as with the Bitcoin Cash fork, mm-hmm. you receive that same amount of that new currency, Bitcoin Cash, mm-hmm. or you received that same amount as you had in Bitcoin. So it, it, it happened August 1st, 2017. Okay. So whoever had the amount of Bitcoin that you had at that time, you would receive that same amount in Bitcoin Cash. Gotcha. Well, you know, let me ask a follow-up question to something you said earlier. You were talking about how uh, not decentralized, you know, trying to stay out of the hands of corrupt governments, things of that nature. How important can a you know a Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin, any kind of cryptocurrency, uh, how important and vital can that be to somebody? in a country where they're not as, you know, developed as the United States or the UK. Like, talk about that potential impact to countries and people Perfect. who live there. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Well, one example would be, let's say, a family from, let's say, Sierra Leone that's okay. in Memphis. For sure. In, in America. Right. If they want to send money back to their country, they're usually going through companies like Western Union, et cetera, mm-hmm. where the remittance fees or the fees to transfer that money is right. Like pretty, pretty high. steep, right? Pretty steep, for sure. Well, if they want to send it back to their family in, in let's say, in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, mm-hmm. basically all they need is almost the equivalent of sending like we do PayPal, right? Or or sending a text message. They can send that money much cheaper. The movement of money, whereas that person you send in a thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. And that person getting almost that the entire thousand dollars. Right. That that makes a big difference. Also, being able to, of course, in those countries uh, where there many of them lack infrastructure or access to banking, mm-hmm. of course, being easier to transmit and for transact sure. money for sure for transactions. Sure. Mm-hmm. So I can send five dollars to someone, let's say a farmer in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. five American dollars in Bitcoin. Right. Convert into Bitcoin. Right. Well, that may have the equivalent conversion of maybe fifty dollars or more. That can make a big difference. Gotcha. Now it wasn't much to me, but that that farmer now they can buy seeds and things right. that they need where they can earn earn an income absolutely. to take care of their families. Gotcha, absolutely. It's almost kinda like you uh, you could look at it another way, like you're almost investing in that that farmer in Zimbabwe yes. in a way that we've never been able to really do That's that right. before. So That's right. it, it it actually makes the world even a little bit smaller. Uh, right. Based on that, so no, I appreciate that. So I see more and more, you know, vendors and businesses starting to accept cryptocurrency. But you know, how can I really spend it outside of that? Sure. You know, like how does that work? Sure. Well, I have a card called a BitPay card. Okay. And it's a Visa card, whereas any vendor that can accept that accepts Visa, 
Okay. I can actually spend my Bitcoin with them. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And okay. there's several others. Sure. But that's that's one way. Gotcha. And that's that's the easiest way, of course. Oh. Okay. And cool. also another way is if that vendor has time, I can if they're open to being educated, mm -hmm. I can basically show them how to set up a free Bitcoin wallet. Okay. Which takes seconds, uh, minutes, I should say. Okay. And wherein I'll show them, hey, I can send you the Bitcoin that I have in my wallet that's on my phone to the wallet that you downloaded on your phone. Okay. You know, that transaction can take place awesome. if they're open to it. Awesome. And Startup Nation, it, you know, for those of you who are have started that path of entrepreneurship and you have a business and that's something that you want to do, you want to accept cryptocurrency um, as a form of payment, Terrence, uh, information is there in the show notes for easy access via email, uh, via his website, TerrenceWilson.com. I did say it. Terrence Wilson Online. Terrence Wilson Online.com. My apologies uh, for easy access for you to reach out to Terrence and try to see if you can, you know, if that's something that you're interested in. But uh, as you can see, I think he's a great resource in order to do that. Thank so you, you. let me ask you this, man. How do I invest in Bitcoin and countless other currencies? Sure. How do I gauge, you know, which currency is right for me? And before you answer that, it's important to know Startup Nation, look, <laughs> you make your own investing. Yes. Decisions. Yeah. We are not here to tell you to invest in Bitcoin, crypto, any yes. other cryptocurrency. That is something that you have to do your due diligence on uh, and make the right decision for you and your family, your loved ones, or wherever the case may be. We are here as just a resource that kind of provides you with the information in order to give you uh, that sound advice to do your due diligence. So right. I, I'm sorry, I just wanted to put oh, that no, out no. there. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. No, so I don't want to get in trouble myself. Hey, so. Trust me, I understand. Trust <laughs> for me, I understand. Sure. For sure. So, what I tell individuals to do, first of all, to open up uh, an account with cryptocurrency exchanges, mm -hmm. there is free. Okay. There's a, almost no charge. There's no charge. And if anyone ever tries to tell you that there's a charge, I'm trying to get over on you. Gotcha. And if you would, you know, it, uh, you know, sure. lay out some of those sure. those, sure. Uh, those the resources. Base, the, sure. the one that most people, the first one that individuals open is Coinbase. Mm -hmm. Coinbase.com. Gotcha. You open up a Coinbase account and give your banking information. Which can actually be a prepaid card. I actually set mine up with a prepaid PayPal card. Okay. So uh, when I set mine up in 2015, you can still do that with a PayPal, a prepaid card. Uh, there will be a limit to the amount that you can purchase. Right. But on Coinbase, with Bitcoin, as you can see, like currently the price is, what, $11,039.60? Yeah. Well, you can actually purchase a fractional amount that you can afford. So if mm -hmm. all you have is ten dollars, you can purchase ten dollars worth of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and if you only have twenty dollars, you can purchase twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin. So then what you want to do is you want to get some Bitcoin, you want to get some Ethereum, you mm -hmm. want to get some Litecoin. Right. Uh, then what you want to also do, you want to open up accounts with other cryptocurrency exchanges. Because on Coinbase, they, they have a limit limited amount of cryptocurrencies. Gotcha. But in order to purchase, but it's one of the only places where you can purchase cryptocurrency with cash gotcha the other uh, most the exchanges most exchanges other exchanges mm -hmm. in order to purchase the other cryptocurrencies you need either bitcoin ethereum or litecoin hmm okay so there's a there's binance and what i after uh what i can do is i can send you a list of them. okay but there's okay. binance there's uh, kucoin and a few others i can't think of them at the moment Gotcha. I got you. They're, they're, yeah, Bitfinex, Bitfinex, right, because right? yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot of them, right? There's a lot of them for sure. Now, what you want to do is when you're transferring, you don't want to transfer Bitcoin because of the fees in transferring. Okay. If uh, you set up a GDAX account, GDAX, after you set up your Coinbase uh, mm -hmm. account, you can actually transfer the Bitcoin free. Okay. Uh, you, you don't want to transfer. Bitcoin from Coinbase because the fees are outrageous. Gotcha. But if you transfer Ethereum and Litecoin, the fees are afford. I mean, it's reasonable. It makes sense. And then when you get to the other exchange, then you can go there and you can gauge. Hey, I want to get these coins. These are coins that I want to purchase. Right. And you can use that to purchase them. So what you'll do is to purchase the other coins. What you want to do? Well, let me back up. Sure. You want to read the Bitcoin white paper. Okay. All right. So, um, and you can go to a search engine, type in Bitcoin white paper. Mm -hmm. It was written by the creator of Bitcoin. The name is Satoshi Nakamoto. Right. It's eight pages. Then you want to do, you want to uh, 
a site called CoinMarketCap.com. Okay. So it has a list of the top 100 or more uh, cryptocurrencies in the world. And you go through and you want to click and you want to get to each cryptocurrency. They have a, a website where you get more information on that coin. For sure. You see the purchase. I mean, the price. You can see the how long it's been around, what exchanges it's available. That coin is available on. Mm-hmm. You can read their white paper. And you can see the team that's behind it because each outside of Bitcoin, Bitcoin's creator uh, uses a, a, a pseudonym. Okay. We don't know who right. Satoshi exactly. Nakamoto is. Exactly. Uh, most likely, it's well, we know most likely it's a computer programmer, mm-hmm. and it's possibly a team of computer programmers. Gotcha. But of course, if we know, if we knew who he was, yeah. Or the gov- I mean, right. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> right. But each other coin, the owner, uh, because. Bitcoin has paved the way. They're actually a company, mm-hmm. and each coin has a a, a a use case. So the the white paper is almost like for them. Those Bitcoin white paper is like this is the reason why we created Bitcoin. This it gives that history. Well, right. each other one it's like this is why we created it, and the idea is that we want to improve upon Bitcoin, and now this is our business model. Gotcha. And this is what we want to do. So you can look at the team. The, own, the owner, the team that's behind it. You can look at their background. You can look at this is what they plan on doing, and you mm-hmm. can gauge at are they is this fluff or is right. this a real life changing for sure idea behind that coin? Whereas then you can look at the price where there are coins that are less than a penny. Like for instance, one Bitcoin can be is divisible into one hundred million units into what's called a satoshi. Okay, so one dollar currently can hold over 7,000 Satoshi, where there are coins that are one Satoshi. Well, I mean, if you, a dollar in right. that currency, you have 7,000 of that coin. Right, But right. that coin that's one Satoshi can possibly, based on massive, widespread adaption of that coin, mm-hmm. can eventually be 10 cent, or one penny, which is big, it, it doesn't sound, but right. 122 Satoshi maybe is one penny. Mm-hmm. So one penny, ten cent, a dollar, that can change lives. It can. Oh, your bank account, should I say? Right, for yeah. sure, for sure. Or change lives, like we well, talk well, about. Well, because like, it will. Right, you know exactly. It absolutely can. You know, based on the, the example we gave with the Zimbabwe that's and it. That's farmer, it. for sure, that's for it. sure, for sure. So look, man, let me ask you this, because like you know, we hear like blockchain and mine like what the hell does that even mean man sure, like sure. Is, is this you know and, and I'll, I'll get into that that leads me to my next question but this one's first uh so what is blockchain what is mining for bitcoin because sure. i hear you and i see you on, on on social media all the time saying that the last one won't be mined like 21 something 2140 yeah, yeah, 21 yeah, yes yeah okay so bitcoin is so there will only be 21 million bitcoin mined okay and the last one will be mine, the year 2140. Mm-hmm. And uh, the idea is that as it gets gets closer, or should I say, it's it's now harder to mine a Bitcoin today than it was, let's say, in 2009. I imagine so. Right. So in 2009, you could mine Bitcoin from this computer here. Mm-hmm. And many people did. But they didn't realize that nine years later where Bitcoin would be. Right. So there are people, they threw those computers away. Right. And right. Uh, they're like, oh, my God, I had 10, I had 10,000 Bitcoin or I had 100 Bitcoin. Or right. Blah, blah, blah. So mining or mining is uh, uh, where your computer solves mathematical equations mm-hmm. and or validates transactions on the blockchain. Gotcha. And as you do that, your reward is in Bitcoin. You're gotcha. rewarded in Bitcoin. And the blockchain is a public ledger or a digital, a public digital ledger. Gotcha. Whereas transactions, that so any purchase made on the blockchain or with Bitcoin mm-hmm. and other cryptocurrencies, et cetera, it's on the blockchain, on that ledger. And those transactions that are on it cannot be altered. Gotcha. So people are doing, using, looking at things like, let's say, marriage certificate. Like registering birth. Right. Well, I've registered my birth on the blockchain. It's mm-hmm. been validated. So I no longer need to go to City Hall. Gotcha. My marriage. Mm-hmm. We're registering it on the blockchain. So I no longer need to. Understood. And a lot of times people, you, you hear where say the blockchain. 
where well now there are blockchains whereas there's multiple blockchains gotcha. there are coins who have their own blockchain so it's not just one blockchain anymore like it's, it's possibly thousands or hundreds of thousands of blockchains gotcha but the idea is that any transaction that takes place on it it's almost written in stone digitally <laughs> gotcha I gotcha it's funny you mention that because when I hear blockchain I easily I easily think of Mario yeah when you hit the block and you get the coin or whatever it, that that's what it makes me and, and, it puts and, me in that mindset so a lot of these a lot of these individuals uh, designing this cryptocurrency mm -hmm. they were heavy in gaming right of course of course uh, of course computer nerds geeks right uh, the first idea or concept of using digital tokens was in gaming mm -hmm. where it you know you want want to have some extra points or right, extra for sure. power right so it only made sense that right the adaption <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. And so with that being said, man, you know, you, you talked about mining and this and the other. Is, is cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin, is it the new gold rush? Yes, it is. Yes, okay. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> so there are Bitcoin enthusiasts or Bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, teachers who basically, uh, they have some videos on YouTube where they say Bitcoin is gold 2.0. Right. They call it gold 2.0. Right. Where they say many of the properties that we looked at in gold mm -hmm. is in Bitcoin. Because physically, if you had $1 million worth of gold in your office, right, and you want to travel from here to, let's say, Malaysia, right. or Chicago, or, or right. Cardova, right. it would be very hard to Com transfer. Very cumbersome, for very sure. Cumbersome. <laughs> right. But your Bitcoin <laughs> and your phone right. and your wallet Mm -hmm. Well, you can travel around the world and no one knows. Right. You can go through customs and For no one. Sure. <laughs> Whereas right. if you go through customs with, right. you go to the airport, you have a million dollars in gold, they're going to want to question you. Or a million right. dollars in cash. Right, they're, exactly. They're, they're going to question you. Exactly. Right. You probably won't leave the airport with a million dollars in gold or cash. Right. <laughs> For sure. For sure. But no, but no I, I wanted to ask that question, man, because like it just seemed like a lot of similarities, right? When you when you read and study about the gold rush yeah. and you see what's going on now, like, you know, uh, like a lot of people who made out the most are the people who got in early, right? And so it, it just just seems like a very, you know, from a, from a, a history point of view, yes. I, I kind of like history. Uh, like it's very fascinating yeah. from that standpoint, for sure. Well, I remember there was a quote about someone doing the, uh, during the gold rush. Mm -hmm. Where the guy said, "Really want to make money during the gold rush? Sell shovels." Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Well, I see the opportunity for us to create so many businesses. I hear that. Ancillary businesses, to whereas we're not necessarily focusing on the coin itself, but how can we, let's say, educate people on the coin or mm -hmm. the best uses of the coin? Right. I can show these businesses how to use the coin, or there's so many things that can that can take place. Right. Uh, how we can create mining facilities let's say in inner city neighborhoods, mm -hmm. mining farms, whereas individuals in those neighborhoods, there, there's so many ideas. And right, so, exactly. There's so much potential, and right. it's, still, it's still new. And right, a lot of people for sure. say, I wish I would have gotten in in 2009. Right. Well, the current stage that we're in is the early, it's not the early stage, but it's the early it's the, mass adoption stage. For sure, for sure. Less than 1% of the world's population is currently using cryptocurrency. Right. There's 7 billion people and growing on the planet. Mm-hmm. It's still new. It is. It is. And it's funny you mention that. You know, when you talk about ancillary business and this, that, and the other, like when you know, I know, and I know you said that it's a lot hot. It's a lot harder to mine uh, Bitcoin now as it was then. But it really puts me in the entrepreneurial mindset of like you can either mine for it where you're spending your time, or you can you know you know invest in this that, and the other where you're spending money. And so it really is one of those things where how do you want to. How do you want to go about pursuing this? And, and and there are cryptocurrencies. Of course, people have thought about it. It's like, well, it's harder for people to mine Bitcoin, but there are other coins that can be mined. Mm. Whereas you can mine from your your desktop. Right. You can mine from your laptop. You gotcha. can mine from your mobile phone. Gotcha. There's a coin where I have an app where I, if I'm walking, mm -hmm. I earn a cryptocurrency. Mm, okay. Yeah. So your mind, that's crazy. Yes, <laughs> that's yes, crazy. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. Last question before we go to break, man, and, and it's a big one. Will Bitcoin replace current currencies one day? I see that happening. 
I do see that happening. And actually what I see is more so Bitcoin, Bitcoin will not replace current currency. Okay. Uh, a cryptocurrency will do it. I got you. It will not be Bitcoin. I got you. Understood. I do not think it will be Bitcoin. Understood. Understood. Because like <laughs> seeing that how I, and and and, I, and I'm trying to follow your logic here. I'm guessing like since Bitcoin is probably like the big yeah, the big, you know, whatever. And so like it usually probably is either Litecoin or something that we haven't that we haven't or, heard of or, or, or not even, as big or down even the road. Along the lines of like what happened with Ripple. More mm-hmm. so, Ripple is designed for banks to transfer funds. Mm. So, so and so and that could be like that transitory piece, right? Right. So, into so moving in that where, direction. Whereas it's a cryptocurrency, but it may not be decentralized. Whereas more so, like where the government is like, look, we might as well go this route. Right. Right. We might as well go this route because. This is what they want. Got you. And we do not want to compete. If we take the lead and we create something that is appealing right. to them, we won't have to fight them. Right. <laughs> right. For sure. For sure. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a break, man. How you like being back on the startup life, man? Man, I'm honored. I am, man. This is <laughs> awesome, man. I, re- I love what you and your wife are doing. I love uh, that you're providing a platform for entrepreneurs. We need more entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And it's platforms like this that will inspire others. I appreciate so, that, honored. man. I appreciate that, man. All right, Startup Nation. I hope you're getting great value so far, but we got to pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to the startup life. a teacher looking for great resources look no further than our teaching with Al section of our website enjoy great lessons such as our mini lesson for the story of an hour or dive into the nixon presidency as part of our legacy series enjoy great peace of mind from our units as they are common core line click the link in the show notes to purchase all right startup nation so let's continue so terrence before we hop back into questions here Talk about a little bit some of the sovereign nations and banks and other businesses that have really started to kind of adopt the cryptocurrency sure. uh, pl- uh, space, if you will. Sure. So two per- perfect examples. Mm-hmm. Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. Right, right. They've committed to placing all of their government documents on the blockchain. Mm, okay. I got you. Yes. I okay. got you. And they are in the process of creating a cryptocurrency technologically eliminating whatever problems or issues someone individuals had in let's say starting a business purchasing property by putting it on the blockchain having an electronic transaction right smooth gotcha. delivery got gotcha. you make it easy transition then, easy right. you know lower entry to barriers yes, you yes, know, barriers yes. got gotcha, you yes. for sure so then Venezuela mm-hmm. what they've done is they've created a cryptocurrency where the natural resources of their nation is backing the cryptocurrency. Right. So you go back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin can almost be seen as an R. In the purest sense, it's a fiat currency. Gotcha. Still, it's a fiat currency. Right. But the difference is it's not issued by a central bank or a government. It's not backed by anything. Understood. But the, let's say, the trust that those of us who own Bitcoin have in it. Mm -hmm. uh, And that we are willing to accept and transact at the rate that it's at, at the value that we currently perceive it at. For sure. Or that they're backing it with their gold, their oil. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. And I believe the name is the petrodollar. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So Venezuela, they've had a lot of financial issues. They've, right. For sure. They've, 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 they've suffered mm-hmm. financially based on the global economy and uh, the value that other countries are placing on that they are going to basically telling them that they're going to buy purchase their resources at the price they want to pay as opposed to the price that they need to receive gotcha to be fair right well they they've taken the control of their economy 
They're sure. making a step. They're saying basically, no, what we're going to do, we're going to create our own currency. We're not going to base out the value of what we have on the U.S. dollar, which for the longest was the standard mm -hmm. based on the dollar. Now they say, no, the petrodollar, that's where we're going. Gotcha. That's crazy. That's crazy. Thank you for sharing that. And, and I, you know, uh, it, it's a big bet for Venezuela, for sure, because like you said, they've been suffering. The economy has been, you know, in free fall, uh, large, doing large part because oil has become kind of cheap, you know, the past couple of years. So, no, they, you know, but if they get it right, oh, man, if they get it right. That's crazy. I just think there's over 190 nations around the world. Right, for sure, and for sure. And everybody's looking. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So let me ask you this, man. You know, what do you say to people who say that Bitcoin is funny money or is not backed by anything? Because <laughs> yeah, you know, you got many critics out there. You got oh, yes. your Jamie Diamonds of Chase oh, yes. Bank, uh, and you got a few others. I, I think Jamie Diamonds probably been the biggest one uh, of so, Chase. So, so. so let's yeah, so, dive into that a little bit. So Jamie Diamond. Let's, watch, let's, let's listen to Terrence start to <laughs> take on Jamie Diamond and Chase Bank. Go for it, man. No so, pressure. So he said Bitcoin is fraud. Bitcoin mm -hmm. is in a bubble. Right. And the price of Bitcoin actually uh, suffered after he made that statement. Mm -hmm. Well, Chase Bank, <laughs> they purchased large amounts of Bitcoin. Huh. Interesting. It came back. Another interview. He said, yes, I do believe it's a bubble. I, believe, I do believe it's a fraud. Mm -hmm. But I believe that it will hit $100,000 per coin. Wow. Yeah. Another another uh, critic of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. one of someone I really look up to financially is Warren Buffett. Right, for sure. He said, I won't touch it. For sure. Well, if you know about Warren Buffett and you study, if you study Warren Buffett, you know, Warren Buffett doesn't believe in investing in anything he doesn't understand. That's true. It's very true. But Warren Buffett owns 70,000 common shares of Bank of America mm -hmm. stock. Right. Bank of America was approved for a patent for a block or a cryptocurrency exchange. It's true. It may not be directly, but indirectly, he will profit. Right. And he's profiting from cryptocurrency. Right. Gotcha. Uh, so <laughs> then we go to uh, funny money. Mm-hmm. The U.S. dollar is funny money. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. The yen is funny money. Right. The euro is funny money. I, 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 believe, well, I believe the euro is back 10% by gold. It might be. I believe so. I don't, but, don't quote me but, on that. But. but, again, it's the perception. We mm -hmm. have faith, in, or let's say, we have faith that, I have faith that if you give me $10, mm -hmm. that I can take that $10 and I can purchase gas or I can purchase some food. Right. Uh, we have that Hey, right. There are many people around the world who are like, hey, they prefer that American dollar. Mm -hmm. But then there are those who are losing, faith, who have lost faith, and they're like, no, I don't want it. Right. And it's the same just with Bitcoin. There right. are those. There are those who say, pay me in Bitcoin. Some right. of them they're saying because they trust politically the where Bitcoin is. Mm -hmm. And there are those who are like maybe if you give me ten dollars today, there's that strong possibility tomorrow it may be worth fifteen dollars. Right. So there's. Those are caveats. Right, for sure. For and sure. what I tell people, I say invest in, well, if you're looking at it from an investment standpoint, mm -hmm. invest in amount that you can afford to lose. Invest in amount that puts something up to where if you lose it, it will not hurt you or your family. Right. Uh, a per an example that I like to tell people about is there's this uh, Snapchat. Mm -hmm. One of the founders of Snapchat is... Uh, child attended a school, a, high, a, a private school in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. The tuition at that school is seventeen thousand per student. Wow! In two thousand and ten, <laughs> he approached the headmaster of the school and said, "Hey, why don't you invest in my company? Throw fifteen thousand into the company." Mm -hmm. They did that in two thousand and ten. Snapchat went public January of two thousand and seventeen. Because that was a small amount of money. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a case as if I loaned you ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. I'm like, hey, what's up? Every week or whatever. Right. They almost forgot about it. Well, when Snapchat went public, that fifteen thousand was worth twenty four million. Mm -hmm. It's like they were able to wait. It wasn't like a I put my money in today. Next week I want it out, or next month I want right. it out. Or right. They were able to sit sit on it. So many of those who purchased Bitcoin, let's say who had Bitcoin in 2009 and 2010, mm -hmm. that's how they amassed great wealth. 
The first purchase made with Bitcoin was uh, May, I believe it was May 22nd, 2010. And what it was, this guy had 10,000 Bitcoin. At that time, that 10, 000, the 10,000 Bitcoin had a value of $30. He was on a group with, uh, a social group with other uh, computer engineers or whatever. Right. He basically said, whoever buys me a pizza, orders me a pizza, I'll give them the Bitcoin. He said, better yet, I want two pizzas because I'll, I'll want one tomorrow when I'm hungry. Gotcha. A guy wired him or ordered two pizzas from Papa John and had it sent to him. Mm -hmm. And he received those Bitcoin. Wow. 10,000 Bitcoin. Right. At it, this value. Right. <laughs> $100 million. Exactly. Exactly. And that was 2010. Mm -hmm. 2010, you wasted $30 on something. Right. You know, you I'm look sure. at the whole year. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Probably lost so we, $30. we all had $30. Right. Everyone who who listened to this podcast mm -hmm. had $30. Right. So look at the opportunities that exist. For sure. There will be some, another coin that will surpass Bitcoin. We don't know which one it is, but right. there will be one. Mm -hmm. But by studying the different currencies, being in tune with the economy, we'll be put in a much better position. Whereas if we just throw $30 here and just sit on it right. and almost forget about it in mm -hmm. 10 years from now, like, whoa, now I have enough money to where it's, I can ensure that seven generations, several generations of my family will be financially secure. Right. That there will be this large portrait in the living room of a, of a family member that I've never seen. Mm -hmm. But because of what I did. Right. Exactly. They, they, they can tell that story. Right. When people come to the house, who is that? Well, that's Terrence. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my great, 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 great. And this is what he did. He right. purchased this coin. And he ensured that my family, that this will pass through. He ensured that we would have financial literacy class so we know what to do with this money. Right. But he's the reason why we have this money. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And no, no, it, you, you speak to two things, Terrence, which is very important. One, you speak to legacy, right? You speak to a fact of like having your picture on that wall when your great 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 grandson or daughter sees it, like, and it gets you know tells their ask their parent like, hey, who was that? Well, that was your your great 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 great, great grandpa yes. who, who invested in Bitcoin because he wanted to make sure you were okay for the rest right. of your life, That's right? right. And, and I think, and, and not just in our community, but a lot of other communities as well. We need to start thinking in that regard. Also, you know, it's very important to point out Startup Nation when Terrence talks about getting the instantaneous return now as opposed to the value added tiered return that's usually greater down the road, right? What's the, the saying, uh, two hands and a bird or, or something? I don't know the saying, but you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like you don't want to forego future earnings or return for something that you need right now. Yes. Sometimes it just pays to be patient. That's it. It That's pays it. to be patient. So I appreciate you sharing that. And so, you know, Terrence, it's been said that by, you know, by some that Bitcoin would drop back down to 5,000 a coin or go up to 60,000 a coin, but they're not really sure which one will happen first. Which direction do you think will go and why? I only see Bitcoin going up. Okay. I don't see it going, I don't see it going down to five and gotcha. if it goes down to five i will buy more gotcha i will only buy more because i after reading the bitcoin white paper i'll say that mm -hmm. it's one of the i see that it's one of the most revolutionary tools of our of our time mm -hmm. in that it's speaking of a transfer of power wherein anyone it levels the playing field should i say for sure that's that's it gotcha there's a window of opportunity where in where african americans mm -hmm. and people around the world my folks african americans gotcha can actually purchase bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and can secure wealth for generations to come right not looking at at, at gambling as as gambling or get rich quick but looking at out of my portfolio i can that i'm, right. I'm investing right i can commit 10% or I can commit a certain amount a week uh, every two weeks or a month mm -hmm. to where it's like if, if it's just $30 but that $30 there uh, can act, build tremendous wealth mm -hmm. there are some coins which if you purchase let's say between 2015 and 2018 that have had increases in value of 3400 to 78,000% mm. there were uh, there was a coin that if you purchased it January 2017, December 17, 
well, a thousand dollars of it in January 2017. Right, right. It will be worth. It was worth uh, half a million dollars. That one thousand dollars by December. Bitcoin today eleven thousand mm-hmm. dollars. This time last year, Bitcoin was under two thousand dollars. So I have a different perception when people say Bitcoin has dropped. Well. When I got into Bitcoin, April of 2015, right, it right. was four hundred and fifty dollars a coin. Exactly, your perception. Then going back, then going you, back mean, to this time last year, it was under two thousand dollars per coin. Mm-hmm. So I saw where it almost touched twenty thousand, but I knew that it jumped too fast. Right. I predicted that by January it would be at ten thousand dollars. Before December was out, it was close to approaching twenty thousand. I'm like, whoa. Mm-hmm. But I also saw what corporate America almost validated Bitcoin mm-hmm. or they, you know, with the CME futures. Right. You right. Know, so that's pumping it, pumping it's pumping new money into Bitcoin. But that money is speculative. Money. Right. Like, for sure. For sure. Know, it's like it's not that they believe in the concept of Bitcoin. They just see an opportunity to earn extra money, get rich. They're getting rich quick. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that. Hey, it's. It will stand the test of time. So I do not see Bitcoin dropping to five thousand, but if it do, I will buy more. Right. But I do see it going up to sixty thousand. Gotcha. I see widespread adaption of Bitcoin. Uh, there's a show. I don't watch much television, mm-hmm. but what's this show with the geeks? Uh, they, I think oh, they uh, Big Bang Theory. They had a, a show. They had Bitcoin. a whole show. It, it was funny because that show ran around that around in the, yes. the frenzy yes. of the Bitcoin that was yes. going on when it was going so, up. So, so yeah. there'll be more shows on Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. There'll be more entertainers uh, talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. There'll right. be songs about it. It'll. So that's how it will be infused into Main, uh, mainstream. Right. There'll be cartoons that it'll be introduced to the youth, games, right. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So that's how I see it. So there's been predictions that by the end of 2018, they get 40000 or more. There's a prediction that within the next three years, one Bitcoin could be worth half a million dollars. I don't know what will happen, but if... With just one percent of the world's population using cryptocurrency, mm-hmm. this thing would have happened with two percent, right? Four percent, right? Eight percent, sixteen percent, absolutely, <laughs> right? And you, you know, you, you bring up very valid points on a on a multitude of things. For starters, when you, for me, you know, when it came to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, it was it was from the Warren Buffett model of like, I just don't know. I don't yes. know what this is. I don't understand it. This that, and the other, right? And then you start to see people like yourself, my man Evan Jefferson. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, and, and I'm a student of his. Right. Exactly. Right. And so I wanted to pay homage to him. Yes. And then you see you talking about it, and like, okay, these brothers are legit. You know, they're credible. This that, and the other, right? So it's like, okay, I'm starting to gain a little steam. Yes. This that, and the other. And then you start talking about the CME futures. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right, and then you start to see Bank of America file a patent for the exchange. I'm like, okay, you starting to see like this. Okay, like this is thing is slowly starting to roll out. And you know, on the second point, like you said, like when it started to roll out, it started leaking in the mainstream. Because I remember when Bitcoin was on that rise late in 2017. Like you know, like CNBC is my bible. Like I, it's, it's what I watch during the day. And they actually have a division. They do just crypto exactly. They had like a, they had a block yes. that it just stayed on the crypto in the yes. crypto current the the entire like pretty much a two months straight. Yes. And so when they start to validate, they start leaking into the pop culture, like you said. And now all of a sudden, you know, I got people calling me. They probably blowing up your phone. They're like like, bruh, what is this Bitcoin? Yes. Yes. How do I get in? Yes. What do I need to do? Yes. And so it, it was just crazy for me to just to see this rise. And so, you know, it, it took me a minute, you know, but it's like I'm starting to see, okay, now I see the path. I just didn't see the path at first, right? But I, now I see the path. And so, and, and rightfully so, you know, you and Evan and everybody else got in, you know, got in early. You, you deserve to have those returns because yeah, you, you yeah. saw, not only did you, you saw it, but you took the risk. 
Yeah. And that's a, one of the things we try to get over to people, whether it be entrepreneurship or investing for that matter. Like, you know, you took the risk. Those people should be rewarded, yes. and rightfully so. So thank you for sharing that. I, I really do appreciate that. So with that being said, man, you know, and like I said, you know, we see people out here, is, you know, it's great, it's, or, you know, or it's not great, or it's funny money, it's not funny money. If it's so awesome, man, why? how come more people aren't getting into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? Sure. What's your take on that? Sure. My take is education. education. I hear that. There are a lot of people, again, they don't know about it. Right. Uh, and if there, there are individuals who are so closed in, if their friend, their immediate circle aren't talking about a specific subject, mm -hmm. it's not, they're like, they, don't, they won't know about it. Right. But... One of the things I like to do is I like to share information, especially information that can help others. Absolutely. And I see so much potential. So when I mention how out of the 7 billion people on the planet, how only 1 billion have access to banking, mm -hmm. well, those 6 million people, or 6 billion people, they transact money. Right. So their banking system is a family system, a family and friend system where it's close-knit, and that's how they transact transfer money right well when they come to America it's in tech so when they come to America they're used to a family system a, a banking system that's based around their family mm -hmm. so they'll get a job the first job that they can get and based on the way that they've been operating that they know of for generations each pay period they meet up it may not be pay period, but on no, different gotcha. cycles, they Some meet type up of cycle, yeah, for and sure. they put money together to where it's, let's say if it's 10 people, the idea is that all 10 of the, those individuals, they're going to get the, the, the bulk of what was collected. Mm -hmm. And what they see is when they come to America, they see success is education, home ownership, and business ownership. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things that they use that for. Right. So you get, let's say, $10,000. Well, you're go you're gonna go open up a store. And the other members of that group, they're vested into it. So they may come and work at your store for a few hours a day. Right. Until that store is successful. You pay off that loan, they open up their store, though they're gonna get the support. Right. So I see how we could do that with, with cryptocurrency. Okay. Of course we need trust has to be built. For sure. But one thing about cryptocurrency, the blockchain, it takes out some of that trust because, or the need, your transactions are transparent. Gotcha. So we can easily say a person took out $10,000 mm -hmm. and we can show it right here. It's not just word them up, but we can right. show it, hey, this is right here, that transaction took place here. Gotcha. I see so much potential in small groups of people coming together, mm -hmm. learning about this cryptocurrency, Making sure that those in the, in their circle know about it, to where they can invest in each other and then invest in our community, mm -hmm. and then those small groups can then link up with other small groups. We we're not trying to take advantage of you. We want to work together. Mm -hmm. So like I don't see one million people just coming together. Right. Just, just right. That would be awesome. It would be awesome. Right. But, but what not. I do see is groups of five and ten coming together. And those groups of five and ten linking up with other groups of five and ten, mm -hmm. to where it's maybe out of that a million people can then be together. And gotcha. I see how that can happen with cryptocurrency. I right. see how small amounts, ten dollars a week, just consistent, mm -hmm. ten dollars a week, twenty five dollars a week, a hundred dollars a week. Right. And again, um, an amount that you can uh, you can afford to lose for sure. Whereas as you're learning, your money, your the value of is is increasing, mm -hmm. and you can then take from that. And invest in other assets. So now we can buy land. We can buy houses. We can buy property. Right. We can then ensure we can buy schools mm -hmm. and have our own private schools. There you go. There oh, you go. Yeah. That brings you know that brings joy <laughs> to my heart for sure, for sure. And so with that being said, I'm, and there's actually a nice segue to a, you know of a shift. I want to kind of take it to show. So you know we know that you know that you know you're all about you know empowerment for people who look like us yes right and especially from an economic standpoint so how do you feel that cryptocurrency can be a catalyst for the african-american community can sure. i talk about that a little bit sure well again let's say if a large percentage of the african-american community purchased bitcoin the same time i did april of 2015 mm -hmm. april of 2015 bitcoin was 450 dollars a coin mm -hmm. and today 
March 2nd, 2018, it's over eleven thousand dollars. Well, it's one way. <laughs> right, for sure. So for sure. So out of that <laughs> the massive increase in value. Then acquiring other cryptocurrencies. Okay. Then diversifying your portfolio to where you're purchasing stock, you're purchasing real estate, you're purchasing businesses. Mm-hmm. That will tremendously uh, empower our community to where we're in a position now to where we have access to capital where we can give out scholarships, where we can reward those in our community who have talent. Mm-hmm. And we can say, hey, we want you to just focus on your talent. Right. We're going to ensure that your expenses are taken care of. But we want you to focus on your talent because you're one of the best, you're the best musician in, or one of the best musicians in our city. Right. But I know that if you're traveling, if you're on tour, Mm -hmm. you can empower and impact a lot of people. Right. For sure. We can finance that. Mm Mm-hmm. Those things I see. Understood. Understood. It's all about that, once again, that legacy building piece, for sure. For sure. So, you know, let me ask you this, man. Why is it such a struggle for our community and families in our community to build wealth? Wealth is wealth. Building of wealth is not taught. Gotcha. Um, there are things that I can watch or read that relates to building wealth that may not appeal to a lot of my peers. Right. But when Jay-Z came out with mm-hmm. whoa, 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 right, he was able to hit him. Right. So we have to find out ways to hit people from multiple angles. Right. Uh, there are things that excite me that may bore others, and mm-hmm. I get that. Right. But if we can get that information across, like there have been people who have told me, man, I love what you be talking about, man, but you share too much information. <laughs> it's like you're too much. And I'm like, <laughs> what is that even mean? Is, I'm like, I want to get y'all this at this level because I want to get you up to, there's some other things I want to talk about. Right. But uh, and, and it's like I'm trying to, always trying to figure out how can I share information in a way that individuals won't just say, man, man, that's it, man, you want it. That's all they're doing. <laughs> right. Well, they can take action and say, look, I'm ready. Now. Right. Tell me the next step. I'm right. Like, hey, I have no problem if you're ready to take the next step, but I don't want to just sit down if you just want to. Right. And, 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 and you know what? And, and that's what that's what I did. Like when I was on the fence about like Bitcoin is that and the other and starting to understand a little bit more. I was like, Terrence, what do I do next? Yes. What do yes. I do next? Got our, you know, I talked it over Kenda, open a Coinbase account. Yeah. There we go. Off and yes. running. So, yes. no, for sure. For sure. I definitely know what you're talking about. <laughs> for sure. We are very, very much beneficiaries to uh, that uh, that dropping the honor, knowledge, brother. if you will, honor, honor, <laughs> for sure, honor. for sure. Uh, you know, and with that being said, man, you know, you know, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins says that you know there's three ways to build wealth in America: start a business, invest in the market, or real estate. Is he right? Did he miss something? Sure. Talk about that. So he's bit. right. Yes, he is right. Mm-hmm. I love Dr. Boyce. Mm-hmm. I love his information. Man, I love his and the the free information that he gives is right. awesome. Right. Whereas you don't have to work, like, if you don't want to pay for what he's offering, mm-hmm. you don't have to. But the free information is is enough. Right. Uh, the What I would say would, insurance. Okay. Insurance. Okay. Um, Maggie Anderson of the Empowerment Experience. I'm okay. not quite sure if you're familiar with her. Vaguely familiar. Uh, vaguely familiar. She wrote this book called Our Black Year. Okay. Her and her husband, they committed that their family would only support black businesses for one year. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's from Chicago. And it was a struggle, but she was able to do it. Gotcha. And she wrote a book showing how it was done, um, the, str- the problems that she had, the issues of having it. She was, uh, they, they were an affluent family, so mm-hmm. they were able to drive across town or order from other cities products and services that they needed. So gotcha. Whereas many that are non-affluent, they don't have that option. But she was able to show that it can be done. Mm-hmm. Well, another part of her her program or is an initiative to where is a certain number of black families acquiring two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar life insurance policies, whereas it will be a one billion dollar transfer of wealth. Gotcha. Well, so let's say you a relative, let's say a relative in your family, they mm-hmm. have a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar life in, uh, insurance policy. Right. You're on their will as a beneficiary. You receive that two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Let's say you only pay ten thousand dollars to, you know, give them a nice send right. away, but for sure. send off with that's two hundred and forty thousand dollars that currently you have. Now let's say you're investing in in your business, you uh, you're investing in real estate, the stock mm-hmm. market, your business, cryptocurrency, right? Uh, ensuring that 
uh, your children that you you already have some money you can just put it up right now all right this is set up for them right this is going to make sure that college or that when they turn a certain age for their business or for their first home for sure well that's the impact of a generation Mm -hmm. and then you teach them the same all right we're going to get a policy you're going to get a policy your wife's going to get a policy you're going to get a wife a policy on the children right and they know the same that they're going to do the same they're going to also get a policy the highest policy that they can get and with the same instructions well that's along with the real estate the business the stock market right yeah, for sure. You 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 bring up two things once again. You know that that kind of jump out at me when you talk about insurance. For one, that you know our our community doesn't like talking about insurance because it talks about you know death and this that, and the other, right? But they don't understand like you know having that policy in place can really be the jump off point yes. for the next you know yes. generation. Because you know I have an insurance policy, and I told Kendall like, look, you know. Give me the, you know, I mean, you know, do whatever ceremony you need right. to do this, that, and the other. But I don't need doves. I'm not going to see them. Right. You know, I don't need doves. I don't need a pearl casket. Legacy. Like, I, you know, like, make sure, you know, that, you know, the house paid off. Yes. This, that, and the other. If I, you know, my time, my demise comes earlier than expected yes. or whatever. But, you know, but like, do something with that. Invest in yes. our company. Invest in our kids. This, that, yes. and the other. Like, I don't need all that. I don't yes. need all that. But um, the second thing that, that, that comes to mind is the fact that, you know, uh, we need to have those conversations. Yes. We really need to have those conversations because it, it, it really could be, like I said, the jump off for, for the next generation. And they could really get some, you know, once again, legacy. That's legacy. It. That's it. Right? For no, sure. Hey, there's nothing wrong with having a plan for your family where you have a 50 50- 100 year plan mm, right 50 to 100 year plan right you're saying this is what, where i want my family to be at even though our children may take on different go in different directions right we at least want to have them prepared to go initially into this direction right so the medical field let's say medical field being prepared to run our businesses mm-hmm. being able to in a position to manage our portfolio right whereas even if they don't go that route we financially train them we provide for them, sure whereas they know that this is what I have. A, I have an obligation and responsibility. Absolutely. Uh, you know, someone like Paris Hilton, she can make as many mistakes as possible, but she's going to always be a billionaire. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so there are things that maybe she she did some goofy stuff, mm-hmm. but she has the backing to where she has the capital. And she has access to people who can help her. Whereas if she want to put out a product, the proper team will come to the table. They show okay, this is what we need to do. So based on your name, all right, we're gonna put this product out. So we're gonna put this perfume out. Right. You're gonna make a whole bunch of money. You can put the, you can put a clothing line out. Absolutely. Whereas, Absolutely. You know, we're not take it's not someone that's struggling, they're taking their last and in betting a farm and saying, Man, I hope this sells and Right. Right. For sure, for sure. Thank you for sharing that, man. That's powerful stuff, for sure. Before we get into the last question, man. You know, anything you want to let the people know what you're doing right now, plug Terrence Wilson online.com. Any, you know, events you got going on, blog, whatever, the sure. floor is yours to do that, man. Sure, sure. So, Terrence Wilson online is, uh, dot com is my blog. I'll have more uh, content. Uh, I have so many ideas of things I want right, to write. For sure. And I, not, I just have to take the time to write them. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, I'm a part of several organizations. Uh, one, we feed the homeless every other Sunday. That's Concerned Citizens of Memphis. I've been doing that since October 2010. Mm-hmm. I sit on the board of directors of an organization called Left Foot Forward. We, uh, March 31st, we'll have a, a uh, at Abyssinia Baptist Church in Whitehaven, also okay. Mill Branch. Uh, we'll have a viewing, a screening of this film called Mississippi Damned. Okay. And it's a film on sexual abuse in our community. Okay. And then we'll have a panel discussion mm-hmm. on sexual be- abuse in our community. Okay. And I'll speak on the issue of uh, the the damages sexual abuse has done to our community. Gotcha. Uh, dating women who have been sexually abused. Mm, gotcha. And uh, For sure. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, with a group, uh, March 17th, uh, one of the groups I'm part of, the Manefra Project, mm-hmm. we'll have a speaker in town to talk about generational wealth. Gotcha. With an organization called uh, Building More Wealth, where we teach financial literacy mm-hmm. in areas of budgets, credit, gotcha. uh, the works, mm-hmm. um, 
we have a very inexpensive and we teach information that's life changing. I hear that. We show you how to repair your credit yourself. Right. right? Not credit, not we're not selling gotcha. credit repair. No, we sell it. It's the education to whereas you can do it yourself. Because if you know how to do it, then you can teach others how to do it. Gotcha. You're empowered. Or an organization called Rhinos Nation. I'm a membership direct director. Mm-hmm. Where we teach entrepreneurship, uh, and our goal is to have a a program. It's called the Young Rhinos Club, mm-hmm. where it's high school students who go through the program. Let's say ninth and tenth grade, two years, two to three years, in the program. There will be every Saturday of the school. Uh, well, six of the eight semester uh, what weeks in school. Yeah, whatever, yeah, that's summer, semester. Yeah, that's some that's Saturday. There'll be. Uh, picked up, transported to a location where they'll be fed breakfast and they'll be taught business structure by business experts in our community. Mm-hmm. And the idea is that by their senior year, they open a business. Gotcha. Whereas they own a business before graduated from high school mm-hmm. and the community commits to supporting them. I hear that. A lot of stuff. I'm, I'm working on uh, <laughs> some e-books. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> a curriculum because I want to be able to go in the community, let's say Westwood, we start a group, mm-hmm. an investment group. Uh, like I show people how there are different apps that they can use where they can get free shares of stock. Gotcha. So by the me finding these resources, now there's no there's no excuse. Right. You say you don't have any money, no problem. You have a smartphone, don't you? Right. All right. You have a bank account, don't you? You don't have a bank account? Well, I can show you how to set up a brokerage account mm-hmm. free of charge with no obligation. Whereas they provide a checking account. Right. So that's that excuse is out the window. Gotcha. You can turn it to this app and you share it on Facebook or social media or with friends or family. Mm-hmm. You get free shares of stock up to $500. Some other sh- apps can turn your change, can invest in the stock and cryptocurrency. Right. I'm just honored that I have resources now to back whatever I'm talking about. I hear that. So if I'm talking to a group of people, or one individual, mm-hmm. and they say, well, what am I going to do with it? I don't have no money. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have a solution. Gotcha. I have an answer to right. it. I can at least get you started. Right, for sure. So if all you do is download one of these apps where you can get up to $500 in free shares of stock, mm-hmm. well, if 10 people are part of a group, that's $5,000 in assets. Right. So now we can really have real kind of conversations about tangible things that can be done. Mm-hmm. You know, if you purchase some cryptocurrency that was one penny and now it's a dollar and you're a group, now you you can talk about something that can be done tangible, some tangible. Right. You know, it's not just dreams. Absolutely. I, I want to do this. Then we can tap into other resources, resources that are available through the city, state, the federal government. Mm-hmm. But if we're not prepared, if we're not taking the time to do those formative steps, for sure, whatever money is put in our community, will go to other people. You know, I right. just saw where uh, they're going to put a lot of money into Whitehaven mm-hmm. and uh, business loans and um, home, home loans. Right. Well, if you don't have your credit together, you will not, you can, you, you will, will not you be will able get to get a piece of that. that. Right. So well, we can get people to where it's all right. This is where you're at currently. Let's help you with your credit. Let's help you with a business plan. Let's help you put a plan together to where you can actually develop this neighborhood mm-hmm. or you can participate in the development of this neighborhood right not just being vocal but actually putting your hard-earned money into it for sure and seeing a return and leaving a legacy right and then being in a position to where you can tap into funds from other locations other places because you've prepared yourself right i'm i'm i'm, I'm optimistic <laughs> uh, i'm the type of person any problem someone throws at me anything negative i say that there's a solution to it. Right. I've, I've trained my mind. I don't know how it happened over the years, but... It just happens, Whatever, whatever situation takes place, I see the positive in it. Right. And uh, and it served me well. Right. I'm... I'm you know, it, it's it, not that fake enthusiasm. Like, right. I'm like, no, no. I see so much opportunity. I see where we can own these these skyscrapers. Mm-hmm. Where we can we can we can pay individuals because there are individuals in our community who can talk to a gangbanger and change their life. Well, we need to put fun, they, that person doesn't need to be working a job, or should I say, working a job where they're not their talent is not right. being used. Exactly. See, I don't need to work talk to a gang member uh, at a stage to where I'm trying to change them if I don't have that 
ability to change them. Right. But what I can do is get my guy here, mm-hmm. talk to him, he get them right, and they come back, and I'm like, oh yeah, so we can do this. You're right, for sure. You, you you like you love that neighborhood so much. How about you have some ownership in that neighborhood? Right. What's your dream? What's your vision? What's your where, where do you see yourself? Absolutely. Where you're living and you invest in life and not death. Hmm. You can own these homes. You can own a business. The world is it's unlimited. Right. But you have to. Right. You have to get to a headspace to where you can <laughs> kind of That's see it. those things. That's no, it. for sure. That's it. For so sure. we can show some opportunity. Show that a lot of our, our youth don't see a future. Uh, they they see a limited future. Should I say? Mm-hmm. Well, we can show that we can build a Wakanda. We can. We can build a Wakanda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's fiction, but that's the beauty of it is now we have something visual. We have a visual. Right. See, there are those who see areas of our community that maybe we would turn our nose up at, but they see opportunity. Not as what it is right now, but what it can be. Right. Yeah, they're going to tear these structures down, but they're going to build something new that fits them. Right. Well, why? we can do the same. We absolutely can. And we can we can do it in a way that doesn't displace. We can provide an opportunity for someone who was once on welfare, who never had a job in their life, to get training work to where they can be productive. Mm-hmm. Productive members of our community, thus our society as a whole. Right. And it'll benefit them. Whereas they're in a position to where they can leave a legacy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, that, and that's where it is, man. Wow. We can have a whole podcast on that one. But, <laughs> but before I let you go, man, the number one thing every person should know about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, man. Number one thing they should know. Number one thing is that the barrier of entry has been removed. Mm-hmm. You can get in at the level that you can afford. If all you have is $10. You can get in. If all you have twenty five dollars, you can get it. All you have a hundred dollars, you can get in. It's not a get rich quick scheme, right? But it is a tool which can be used to build wealth over time. I hear that. I hear that, man. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Startup Life, man. I appreciate all the content, all the commentary you gave us today, man. Uh, you know, uh, I look forward to have you back on the show again. Hey, I look forward to it. At well. another point in time. And, hey, once again, man, I appreciate you, what you do for our community, what you do for our culture, for sure, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank man. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> I am Startup Nation. So here's my final take. Bitcoin is here to stay for a nice little while. We don't know if it's going to be the new currency or it could be just here for now and be replaced by something much bigger, as Terrence says. The thing is, Startup Nation, you have to do your due diligence and you have to be willing to take a risk if Bitcoin is something that you want to invest in. As you know that, you know, nothing in life is guaranteed and you should do your due diligence. But just know that if you don't invest in Bitcoin and it does hit big, you'll be kicking yourself later. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic or like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you're there, like and follow our page as well. It's a new way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is here in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can now be heard on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. If you are listening on iTunes and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. And hey... If you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.